Hey, did you know I sell filters on Gumroad? Click the link in the description and follow the page to be updated whenever I share new projects. I also have a Patreon where you can contribute each month and help support the channel. Tier 3 gives you access to every new and existing Gumroad product without having to buy them all separately. Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing off two patches. The first one is the screen tap, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Here's an example of it being used to reverse the direction of this rainbow pattern. And the second patch is the screen tap and hold, which I think is less common in filters, but can be used in combination with other patches, like the screen tap, to create more complex effects with additional user functionality. Let's go. Okay, so first thing, as always, switch over to 2D view, open up the patch editor, give yourself a little bit more space, and we're good to go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a face tracker to our scene. Right click that, and I'm going to add a plane. Now you could also add a face mesh or a canvas with a rectangle in it, anything you like really, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to be using a plane just for the example here. I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to drag it up here just to the forehead so that we can see our person underneath. Next I'm going to add a material, and I'm going to rename it to plane, and I'm going to change the shader type from standard to flat. Now we can unpause and just let that do its thing in the background while we grab a patch to make this look nice. So hit the library here under patch assets. You can scroll through and add anything you like at this point but I'm going to type in rainbow which is one of the new patches that's been added and I'm going to be using the rainbow omatic patch so import that or anything you like into your assets panel and drag it inside of the patch editor. Now we're going to connect up our plain material so create a patch from this texture, connect from the output of our rainbow omatic patch or whatever patch you've chosen to use and connect it to the input of our plane. Now we're going to create a screen tap patch, so type that in. And if we drag from this gesture state output, you'll see we have two options here. One is for the animate and one is for the direction. I'm going to choose the direction right now and it will automatically create this switch which goes in between the two, so you don't have to worry about that. But you can add it manually. If you type switch, then you'll be able to read about it and figure out what it actually does for yourself. It is what the name suggests. It just flips the switch and selects whether it's an on state or an off state for this Boolean here. So these inputs here with the checkbox are configured figured as booleans which basically just checks whether a statement is true or false so if we connect this up then by default the direction here is false which means that the direction of the rainbow is going from left to right and then if we tap on the screen you'll see it reverses the direction here so the checkbox is on the switch has been flipped and you can see that actually happening as these connections light up I'll do it again and you'll be able to see it go back the other way so now that we've got that all set up I'm going to duplicate the plane inside of our face tracker you could add another plane but it will appear by default at the center of the face and we'd rather have it in the same position as the one we've already got so I'm going to duplicate that I'm going to rename the first one to rainbow and name the second one earth because that's the image I'll be using so at this point import any images that you want to use or any patches that you might want to use but consider the boolean thing that I just explained uh, I'm going to be using this earth image here because I think it's pretty cool it's a very high quality image so if we take that as a png and we drag that here into our assets panel it can be a jpeg as well or any image format that is compatible with spark I'm going to be using this earth one now we can select our earth here add a new material for it rename that to be earth i'll rename the plane here to be rainbow plane and this can be earth plane and now we can switch the shader type on that to flat and add the earth as our texture now you'll see because it's a png it has no background so you can see both layers here both planes at the same time so what we need to do is create a screen tap and a hold which is this one here. And we're gonna use this to trigger a change in the visibility of our earth and rainbow planes. So let's select both of them up here, rainbow and earth planes, and we're gonna create patches for the visibility of both. So hit that box there, and it will create two new patches, one for the rainbow and one for the earth. So if we uncheck this box now, the rainbow will disappear, and we can bring it back, and it's the same for the earth. We can make that disappear. So now we're gonna drag out again from the gesture state output, and we're gonna create a not patch, which in this case will reverse the Boolean signal. So the way that this works is that if if it's true then this checkbox is on and if it's false then this checkbox is off what this does is takes that signal and reverses it so when the screen tap is true this not signal will reverse it and it will output as false and we can use that to connect our rainbow patch here and if we drag from the gesture state again and bypass this not patch then we can connect our earth patch as well so now we have both connected but the rainbow has a not signal here so now when we screen tap and hold it sends a signal from the gesture state to our earth plane which is currently invisible and it will make that visible because it will change this boolean from false false to true and in this case the signal will go from the gesture state through this not patch which will reverse the signal and make this true statement into a false statement so now if I hold down here then it will alternate between visibility on our earth plane and our rainbow plane and as you can see I can still tap to change the direction of our rainbow you now have a screen tap here which activates one patch and we have the screen tap and hold which will completely alternate the entire image on screen by changing the visibility of our layers now what's even cooler is that we can take this screen tap and hold and we 
can add more interactions to it. So if we wanted, we could connect from here and add a loop animation. And from progress, we can add a transition and we'll leave that transition as a vector three because what I wanna do is take this earth plane here and I wanna change the scale of it when we screen tap and hold. So not only will it become visible, but we'll also scale it up. So we'll set these start values for the X, Y, and Z at one and we'll increase them to 1.5 on all three. So now if I connect this up here, it doesn't make any visible changes to start with. But if I refresh and hold the screen down, then what we end up with is this loop animation, which is combined with our visibility patches. So what you can see now is when I let go of the screen, it goes back to normal, the default, which is the rainbow plane. I can tap it and reverse the direction here using our screen tap patch. And I can tap and hold it which will not only alternate the visibility to our earth plane, but also scale it up to 1.5 times the size, which is pretty cool. We can change the duration here, make it a little bit slower. We can mirror it, let's say 2.5 and mirrored. So now if I hold it down, it will slowly increase the scale and then it will go back down again. And you can do this with a bunch of stuff. So I could add the rotation patch in here. I'm gonna need a separate transition. So we'll copy and paste that uh, and we'll set the values here at zero, zero and 360 degrees to start. And then on the X, the Y, uh, we'll leave those at zero and we'll change this to zero as well. So now if we connect this up here and get this connected up to our loop animation. So now you can see this is what we've got set up. Coming into here, we've got two transitions, one for the scale and one for the rotation. Ah, it's duplicated. So there's a bug in Spark AR right now, which duplicates some of the objects in your scene. Don't worry about that. You can just delete it and it will go back to normal. I'm not sure what that is. If you do experience this bug, you can hit this button down here and you can type it in and describe the details of it and report it to Spark AR. It's been present for the past few versions and they haven't actually fixed it yet. So so I'm not sure what that is, but if you experience that yourself, that's a quick fix. You can just delete. Look, they've done it again down here. So we have two planes now. Uh, let's delete that one as well. And then we can double tap. And you can see now we have the scaling spinning Earth. I know the Earth doesn't actually spin that way, so it's a little unrealistic, but still pretty cool effect, I think. So if I make a little bit more space now, then you'll be able to see all the patches that we've set up. Like I say, it's a pretty simple effect. If I switch over to the FaceTime camera, you'll see that it's actually a different day. I'm wearing a different colored t-shirt. It's not even a t-shirt, it's a sweatshirt. But yeah, now we have this rainbow thing on my head. If I tap on the screen, it changes the direction of the rainbow's flow. Now it's going right to left. Now it's going left to right. And if I hold the screen, like screen tap and hold, then it switches the visibility to this earth plane and it's scaling it and rotating it at the same time. So you can add a lot more interactions once you figure out things like screen tap, screen tap and hold. If you double tap on the patch editor and type screen, then you can see that there's also pinch, rotate, screen pan, which is when you uh, swipe your finger across. So there's a lot of patches like this, which I don't think many people will look into, especially when they're starting out, but it's worth playing around, seeing what kinds of interactions you can come up with, because this is a very simple example, but there's definitely a lot of cool stuff that can be done here. So have a play around, see what you can figure out. I hope this was useful for some of you, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe it's too basic, but feel free to let me know in the comments. I like going through each of these patches and just like trying to figure them out myself. I like to think of it as explaining it might help someone visualize it better, you know? That's, that's really the reason I make these videos. So I have a reference for myself to look back on as I continue learning, but also to hopefully help other people visualize and better understand the features of this software themselves so that they can go off and make cooler stuff than I could ever dream of, which has definitely happened over the past year, for sure. People send me cool stuff all the time. So yeah, play around with it. This is the final result. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, share it with someone who might be interested, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and check all the links in my description because I really appreciate it. And your support means the world to me. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, peace. Peace on earth, man. <laughs> Before you click off this video, I just wanted to let you know that I have merch now. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers. You may have noticed I updated my channel art, so I took that logo and put it on a bunch of stuff. If you're interested, it does help out the channel, so the links will be in the description. I wanna put out a lot more content this year and your support really goes a long way, so thank you.